Ever since the fight between Capitano and Mavuka happened, a lot of players got really upset on the defeat of Capitano against the Pyro Archon. Some got disappointed, while the others didn't even believe that he lost. Some even say that he held back during this battle, or whatever they think. But just a reality check guys, Capitano lost fair and square, there is no denying it. But is that really true? Did Capitano really held back? Who is this captain? And most importantly, why did most of the community actually want a Capitano to win? Do they have something against Mavuka? And why do community don't like Mavuka as much as they like Capitano? There is a lot to discuss in this video, and it's not just limited to only this battle. So stay with me. You're going to learn a lot today. Alright everyone, Maharb is here, and one thing I love about Genshin is that whenever a battle happens, instead of you know ending it in a tie and pleasing both parties, they announce a clear winner. Fight's over. Do you yield? And I love it because any match that ends with a tie always feels like an unsatisfactory result. But let's first assess the battle between them, and then we will talk about everything else. In times of crisis, someone must pick up the mantle of salvation. Your plan has reached an impasse, and now it falls to me to create new rules for Natlan. But before the dawn of a new age, the old must be destroyed. Now with the sentence, it is quite clear that Capitano did not come to mess around or give speeches, nor does he has any intention for leaving Mavuka alive. He came here to kill her, so no argument can be made that he was holding anything back during this battle. I assume that's the end of your speech? Good. People like us? Let our plates do the talking! <laughs> You can see Mavuka clearly had an upper hand with her strength here, and whoever says it's because of the Claymore, they need to stop coping. <laughs> Capitano's kick was also the reason most of the community thought he is more powerful than Mavuka. But no one pointed out that Mavuka took it and kept attacking like it's nothing. And the iceberg also did only a little bit of damage to her when she wasn't even serious about the battle. Now as you can see, the damage Capitano dealt to Mavuka was when Mavuka herself was not using her full power because her hairs were not glowing. But after these two hits, when she got serious, you won't find Mavuka getting hit by Capitano in the entire battle. In fact, Capitano ran for his life all around the stadium. Have a look, she is slicing through everything Capitano throws at her. Mavuka's flames overpowered Capitano's ice. And the way Capitano took the step back again. This is the second time Mavuka showed that in terms of sheer strength, she is stronger than him and there is no denying it. Now with this shiny glowing aura, it is confirmed that he is native to Natlon, which makes sense as to why he is so concerned about the situation in Natlon, and why it falls to him to create new rules for Natlon. Also, with every previous region, we got the Fetwi introductions from their native lands, like Signora was from Mondstadt, Tartaglia is from Sneznaya, but has close ties with Liyue. Baladir is native to Inazuma, the doctor was from Sumeru, and Arlequino, even though is from Canria, she is a Fontanian resident. 
It also aligns with the fact that in Natlon, if you have enough strength, a human can also ascend to Archonhood. And that's what Capitano wanted here. To defeat Mavuka and become an Archon of Natlon. First to create new rules for Natlon, and second to revive Zabalin K, as everyone speculates. But hey, you are fighting an Archon here, don't think it's going to be that easy. <laughs> Does anyone else felt like this is our wishing screen? Or is it just me? <laughs> yep, Mavuka is clearly overpowering him. Poor Kinnich, his claymore got destroyed. You can again see that Mavuka's flames overpowered Capitano's ice. Now, as you can see, Mavuka only got a little distressed and kept going, while Capitano suffered a great injury and fell onto his knees. Even now, if someone says Capitano was stronger than Mavuka in this battle, or that it was a draw, then I don't know what winning looks like. Now as you can see that Mavuka had no intention of leaving the fight just yet. But at the same time, it was not Capitano who retreated himself. In fact, he was still ready to keep the fight going unless one of them has to lose their life. But the fog came from behind, and Capitano was rescued. But by who? Well, it's highly likely that it was Ororon. We saw in the ignition trailer. And he works with Capitano and is from Masters of the Nightwind. Now let's answer some questions we had in mind. Did Capitano lost? If you progress to the story, in the end credit scene, Capitano himself said, As for you, I must confess, I did not expect that little trick of yours to save the day. No matter how dense the fog, as long as the sun remains, we cannot turn day into night. She could have dispelled it. She simply chose not to. Ah, you don't have much time. And you're injured on top of that. What do you plan to do next? Now this answers our question, as that Capitano clearly lost the battle, but also raises some more questions. Why did Ororon felt the need to save the captain? Well, one thing we know about Capitano other than he is extremely powerful and brave to go one-to-one -one against Archons. He is also righteous enough to not back down in a battle that he himself started even if it means putting his life on the line. It could be because if Capitano keeps fighting her, it could result in his death, and Fetwi cannot recover from such a big loss. But then why did Mavuka chose not to dispel the fog? It could very well be because Mavuka and the others were already fighting against the Abyss, and could not shift their focus on taking that big of a challenge when there are already more problems they have to deal with. Mavuka was also exhausted, just like Capitano, so it was better for her not to keep the fight going for much longer. And most important question, we always see Fetwi with some sort of external powers like a delusion. And they also have different forms like Tartaglia has Foul Legacy, or Signora having Crimson Witch of Embers, Scaramouch being the Shooky No Kami, or Arlecchino having Cinder of Two Worlds Flames form. But it seems like the Captain doesn't have anything like that. But why? The answer to that can also lie in his ideals. If he would use the delusion, it will feel like he used something that is not of his own, and he wouldn't want to win a battle by using a borrowed power. He also refused to take advantage of Mavuka's weakness when he received word that she lost her powers by offering it to the Sacred Flames.
Together we foresaw the only path that leads to our nation's future. We must trust in that vision now. Is everything okay, Archon? Ah, completely fine. Just lamenting the fact that I never got a picture when I could still turn my hair into flames. <laughs> ah, too late now. My lord, we've received word that the Pyro Archon has lost much of her power. Although your injury complicates things, this is most certainly the opportune time to seize the Gnosis. Victory and defeat are rules, not outcomes. I have never taken advantage of an opponent in a time of weakness, and I don't intend to start now. Secondly, there are always consequences for using a delusion. So Captain may not want any effect of delusion on him. Or maybe he has a form like these but could not get enough time to transform into it because their battle was already really fast-paced. And these transformations do take time. It could be that if he tries to transform into his ultimate form, it could end up like what happened to Tartaglia in Fontaine Opera Epicles. Mavuka would not give him time to transform. Otherwise, it could be that when he and Mavuka were on edge, it was the perfect time for him to transform, but Ororon interfered. But still, it certainly doesn't look like he was transforming. He was just getting ready to do his usual moves. Anyways, the unanswered questions don't end here. By looking at Capitano's model, he did not have any vision, nor do he have any delusion. So then from where did he get his powers? Secondly, his color scheme resembles that of the Abyss. So even if he got the power from the Abyss, he should have had Abyssal powers like Dainsleaf, instead of this dark cryo power. But whatever the case, what we know for sure is that he didn't hold back, and he admitted his defeat. And with that being said, let's talk about why Community is upset on Capitano's loss, or that why Community wanted Mavuka to lose this battle, but got disappointed. Well, I have some speculative answers. Firstly, it was the first appearance of Capitano, so it mattered a lot for his reputation in the fanbase. We have already known and heard so much praises about him, and how strong and fearless he is, so the community was looking forward to see him defeating a god for the first time. This could also be evident, because we have never seen any mortal winning against an Archon before. So this was the first time fanbase was actually excited to see what the strongest mortal can actually do. And second reason, according to me, is their character designs. Ever since the community saw Capitano on Signora's funeral, they were excited to see him, and his hype in the community was more than the Pyro Archon since that day. But when we saw Mavuka's design, it was extremely disappointing. No way does she look like the Archon of Natlon, for obvious reasons. And even me, who is always biased towards girls whenever I see them, I myself did not like Mavuka's design at all. This is the reason why I always use her model on my Deya. And when I will pull from Mavuka, I will swap Deya's model on her, so that my Deya will become the true Pyro Archon. So I don't really like Mavuka's design, just like a lot of other players. But Capitano actually looks like a warrior, someone who is destined to be a victor, someone who fought wars and battles before, while Mavuka looks like a biker gang member and a stripper from a bar whose shirt zip can easily be opened by slight movement of hands. I was also wondering why Capitano didn't use that trick to overpower her. I have never taken advantage. Anyways, all jokes aside, no matter how Hoyo decided to fuck up her design, she was still the Pyro Archon, the Archon of War. Capitano didn't lose to some ordinary fighter on the street. He went toe-to-toe -to -toe against one of the most powerful Archons in Teyvat. And mind you that she was not just a human who ascended to Archonhood like what was happening for the previous 500 years. She was the reincarnation of the original Pyro Archon who created the rules for Natlon, and all the other Archons were a part of her plan. So she was indeed way stronger than all previous Archons Natlon got in the meantime. This could also be the reason why Capitano specifically chose to fight against her. And this in and of itself is a very big deal. But even though we always speculate that he had more tricks up his sleeves and he did not fight with his full potential, Mavuka also did not fight him with her full potential. She uses Kinich's claymore to fight with Capitano, and the damage she dealt to the captain that made him fall to his knees was from her punch, not from her weapon. Secondly, Mavuka and Capitano's final punch was from equal footings, but it was Capitano who suffered the injury while Mavuka was left in scathe. 
So the difference in power between Capitano and Mavuka was already evident the way she kept overpowering him throughout the battlefield. But what do you guys think about this battle? I've seen a lot of players who are just upset because how can a man lose to a woman? They need to chill. But anyways, Capitano fighting face to face against an Archon and left with his life and now roaming around Natlon freely is already an amazing feat. Plus as for now, since Mavuka don't have her powers, it is very likely that in the end, this Gnosis will also end up in the hands of the Fetwi by one means or the other. We still have to see more of Capitano and Mavuka, but I don't believe they both have any intention of exchanging blows again. Hi, I am Muharib's wife, Layla. My husband would be very happy if you leave a like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to join our Discord server and he will see you in the comments section. Peace!